Thưa thầy, thưa cô, I have a question regarding making decisions. So I just graduated college, university, and I'm stepping into the adult life. So I'm starting work soon, and I'll be funding for myself and having my own life and making decisions based on my choices. So, um, yeah, I want to know how do I stand up for my joy, for how I feel towards a decision, instead of just pure logic or opinions from people around me. Like, for example, my parents have put a lot of effort into building the steps for my life. Like, oh, if you do this, do this, and do that. If you climb up the ladder in the corporate world, if you get this job, if you achieve this status, then we will feel satisfied with our effort because we spent our entire lives building the blocks for you. All you have to do is follow these blocks. <laughs> It don't go the other way. <laughs> so, but then my heart, I it makes sense to me. I even do pros and cons to consider all ways and like the situation of the world, the economy, and you know, calculating taxes and everything. And yeah, they make sense. Like that will give me a lot of, you know, good returns, stabilities, like a good life to them. But my heart, my joy says the other way. You know, like like deep down I know what decisions I need to follow in order to feel like myself, in order to feel like this is who I am, this is what, is what makes me happy and content. But then I need to be able to stand up for that little voices and be able to just be me and not be overthinking or having to defend myself so much. I would love to hear the sister's answer to that. But since I'm here very shortly, I hear from you that you pretty much, basically you gave the answer to your question while you were speaking. You know, you know your way, you know what sparks joy. The only thing is how it can mute your parents, <laughs> right? Everybody was laughing here because we went through the same thing. Like our parents were building these blocks and said, here, this path is for you. And I'm like, nah, you know, that's your path. You built this. My path maybe takes the first few steps, but then goes in a different direction. And only I can know that path. And hearing you, only you know that path. Your parents built the blocks to safety and you built the blocks to your inner joy and what you love to do and what you're best at because you know, you know your heart, you know what you want to do, what brings you joy, what makes you you, what makes you beautiful. And your parents want that, but over that they want you to be safe. So the easy answer would be whatever your parents say, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not at your age. When you're five, you know, it's okay to follow. Yeah? They say, go to bed, you go to bed. They say, eat, you eat. But you're old enough, and maybe this is how you can reason with your parents. You know, I've been following your path, and it's, and it's brought me here, and it's beautiful. And now, my dear parents, I have this many choices. That's a big intersection for me, and it's very important to me to go the right way. And I see you want the best for me. I see your intentions. And I value them and I appreciate them. And without you, I wouldn't even be here. But I, would, I would like to ask one thing of you, and this is, you brought me here. And to trust me that I know how to continue, that I know what brings me joy, and that I also have my own safety in my mind. 
And in case you see I'm wandering too far off what your vision is for my life, we can talk, you know, and I'm happy to share with you my heart. But I would love for you to understand me that I want to blossom and I want to treat myself as I believe and who I am and that I find my way. I love to walk your way, but it's your way. And I walked it and now I see there are many, many options for me to walk and uh, you brought me here, but now it's for me to, to make a decision to really walk my unique way so I can be happy but also successful. And then I'm safe. And um, I believe when you, when you say it like this in your words, you know, you were very convincing, you got me. I support you wholeheartedly. <laughs> Bring your parents here and we talk them all down together. No, they really love you, and that's, that's important also to, to remember. They do that out of love, you know? They don't want you to be the same. Like our parents, my parents too, they worked a lot to, to guarantee their children a better life. They want to make it always easier for the next generation. So we have to keep that in mind, acknowledge it, but also demand our own choices to also make it better. And uh, they see, then they can see the struggle they had with their parents and said, yeah, I know, you know, that's out of fear that I would just want your safety. And you say, I know, and I love you for that. And now let me go. <laughs> Do the sisters have a word? I'm very curious, so I can apply it to my own parents. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to add a few things. First, as an adult, we don't always have the answer to everything. And it's okay to say, I don't know. Because uh, there's actually no course in college for adulting. And I think every one of us in this room is still learning day by day. So we don't have to have the answer to what it means to be an adult. But there's one thing that we can always do, and I piggyback off of Brother Ngokam and what he shared is your parents love you the best way they know how to love. Uh, I, grew, I was born and raised in America. I totally took an unconventional lifestyle. <laughs> of course, my parents said, oh, you can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be this, you can be an engineer, you can... And then, lo and behold, I shaved my head. Uh, and of course they were worried, you know, she's going to be okay, but on the bottom line, they still are very happy for me because I am happy. And it's not easy. Maybe right now you have an idea of what will make you happy. Mm. We have an idea, you want to go towards that, and your parents, they have their experience. It's not to say that their experiences are invalidated. We can listen to their experiences and take it as our own, and not necessarily blindingly follow their experience, uh, because their experience comes from a different time and space. Growing up in Asia, through war, etc., maybe, like my parents were. So then the security and having enough food, because that was their fear of not having enough food, or whether they would get food for the next day during the war. You know, so then they said, when you go to your parents' house, they give you food all the time because they think you're hungry. Yeah? It's because that's what their suffering was. It may not be your suffering because you grew up in abundance, but it helps to understand why they act the way that they do. It's a generational suffering, a total different time and space. They may have insights from their own suffering, but it may not be the same like yours. 
but it doesn't hurt to understand where they come from. So when you do share your aspirations or your dreams, you don't blame them and criticize them for suffocating you so much or making them do follow their dreams. Because I also know that as a, a child of immigrant parents and many other immigrant parents here, they also had their dreams and they couldn't fulfill their dreams because the conditions were not sufficient. And so instead of saying, I want to cut myself off from you and I want to do my own thing, you, know, you can also say, I would like to learn your dreams. Can I hear your dream? And maybe I can fulfill your dreams also. My mother told me that, you know, I've always wanted to learn the guitar. <laughs> I didn't know that. You know, because she was always focused on work and raising her children. I didn't know that she had this artistic side in her. And so I said, okay, we'll see what we can do. You know? So then those things, will, our differences can bring us closer together rather than use our differences as something to pull us apart. So your aspirations or your, your path or your journey may be yours, but it doesn't hurt to open our eyes and listen to what our parents, their greatest concerns are, and also their greatest dreams too. Because we, as a, myself, as an American, uh, Vietnamese American, I've had many conditions to be whatever I could have been. But I, I didn't even become what anything that my mother and father had on their list. <laughs> I don't think any of us here has had your child become a monastic on your list either. <laughs> you know? And I tell you, it's the best job. <laughs> Um, but yes, so listening to yourself is one thing, but also understanding your parents and why they do these good, why they act in certain ways, so that you, what may seem to be different can bring you guys closer together, and then you won't be too torn inside of yourself.